Hello friends, how are you doing today? My name is Rachel and I'm from cghelpline.com. Today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial about how to create a video from a sequence of images. Uh, let's get straight into it. Here is my sequence of images starting from frame number 30 and it goes way down to frame number 300. And my job is to create a video from them. So this, uh, to do this, I'm going to use Blender, uh, the open source program. If you haven't installed Blender, please go to blender.org and you can freely download the latest version and install it. We are going to be looking at video sequence editor uh, in particular in Blender. Okay, so I'm going to start Blender and I'm going to change the view to Video Sequence Editor like this. And I'm in Video Sequence Editor, you have three views. One is the Sequencer view, one is the Preview, and one is the mixture of Sequencer and Preview. That's what I want. That's the third button here. Let me increase the Preview area a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the images, the sequence of images. Go to add, click on image and go to the directory in which your images live and click on A. A is for select all. It selects all the image sequences, all the images in the sequence and then press enter. That will bring your image sequence into the timeline of the video sequencer and I'm going to adjust this, uh, move it around so that the first frame of the sequence sits on the first uh, first or the zeroth frame of the uh, video sequencer. Let me also increase the preview area a bit by zooming in. Okay. Another thing you need to do is adjust the timeline to suit your video sequence, image sequence. In this case, I can see that after this particular frame, my uh, image is no, uh, do, no longer exist. So I need to set the last frame of Blender to the last frame of my image sequence, which is 271. I can do that here by typing in 271. Okay. The next thing you will want to do is to change the resolution of your output video, which can be done in render presets. You can either choose one of them, or in this case, I'm going to set it to a custom 640 by 480. And this next thing you would like to do is to change the FPS, the frame rate. Uh, Blender comes with a variety of frame rates. Uh, 24 for film, 25 for PAL, 29.97 or almost 30 for NTSC, 50 for games maybe and uh, you can also go for any custom frame rate if you prefer. I'm going to stick to 24 film. The next thing I will be doing is I'm going to change the video format. Currently as you can see it's set to PNG which is no good for me because I need a video, I'm going to choose AVI JPEG. Under the under AVI JPEG, you can see a quality which you can just slide to set it to whatever quality you need. Just remember that the more you increase quality, the file size would increase. The uh, final file size of your video will increase. I'm going to put it to 100%. And lastly, I will just need to give an output directory by clicking here. Oops. I'm going to set it here, Blender test video, and I'm going to give it a name. Let me name it uh, tutorial dot blender underscore ing six. Okay, I'm going to click on exit. That's all uh, the setup that's needed to get your image sequence into video. The last thing you need to do is simply render by clicking the 
render button. Under the render tab, you'll see three buttons, render, animation, and play. The middle one, animation, is what you need. Just click on it, wait for a quick uh, couple of seconds, and that's it. It's already rendered your video. Let's go to the folder where I saved it. What did I save it as? Yes, Tut Blender Image Sequence. That's the video that I just made. Right click, open with Windows Media Player. <clears throat> right away, I can see that I have done some mistakes. I wanted a video of 640 by 480, but this seems to be much smaller. And I know what the mistake I did. What I did was, I set the dimension to 640 by 480 in Blender, but I have also set it to 50% of whatever uh, resolution is set in these two inputs. I'm going to click this and pull it all the way up to 100% so that I get a 640 by 480 video. Let's go back there and remove the old video. You know, deleted it off. Come back to Blender and click Render Animation again. Again, just a couple of seconds and your video is ready. Let's go back here. Open with Windows Media Player and as you can see, my video, which has been converted from a sequence of images, is ready. The file size, as you can see here, is just under 15 megabytes, which is quite a decent size. With that, we come to the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, please use the comments below, or you can go to cghelpline.com and post any question related to any field of computer graphics. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.